a big name in comedy, takes the stage in Louisville tonight. And I've got to say, when the GDL staff found out that he was coming, everyone got really hype. Well, I got a lot of time invested in this toast for me, Larry. Now I'm going to have to start all over again. You have to start all over. I don't start all over again. Well, you pick up where you left off. I can't pause toast. You can pause toast. If this toast goes back in that machine, it's going to lose its essence, Larry. Leon. It's not even going to be Leon. toast no more. Will you get a man his toast? <laughs> Comedian J.B. Smoove is a man of many hats, doing everything from video games to SNL to cartoons to, of course, Curb Your Enthusiasm and The Real Husbands of Hollywood with Kevin Hart. Please welcome J.B. Smoove to the show. No stranger to Louisville, but it's been a while since he's been back. Yes, indeed. So good to see you. How are you? How are you? How are you? Good, good morning. Good you. morning. Good morning. I'll get out of your no, way. No, no, you take the hot seat. <laughs> I will come over here and spin around like TV. Oh. That's how we do, we turn towards the camera. Bam. And bam. Hello. Hello, Hello Louisville. I miss you guys so much. And people are going <laughs> to get an opportunity, though, to see you tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, Stand-up world is my, is my element. You know, that's my, that's my, uh, my roots. That's where, that's where it all start, started at. Doing when... stand-up in New York and, uh, you know, hitting the road and meeting good friends like my friend Spike Davis, who's from here, and uh, Cat Williams, who... Uh, Cincinnati, I think, oh, down yes. the road, and uh, we would perform in this area and tour all around the cities, all the surrounding cities in the area, and um, always have a good time. That's that's the grassroots right there. Can we start, though, even before that? Uh -huh. Okay, fact-checking, you know, my <laughs> producer here. True story, you worked as a perfume formulator and sold fire extinguishers? Oh, I, I, I've had some amazing jobs, you know, and um, I'm blessed because I think those jobs make me uh, uh, accountable yeah. and and responsible and being able to get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, perfume, I, I got it. That was my first after school job. Um, I had a choice of being on a wrestling team or, or getting an after school job. And I wanted, I wanted my first car so badly. Everybody wanted their first car. And, and you had to get a job, you know, to get your first car. And uh, uh, I, I remember uh, it's my first day there, and uh, my boss was like 75 years old. And he told me everything uh, about being a perfumer. And uh, I, I first started at, uh, mixing it with him and then I started uh, doing it myself and started packaging and shipping and uh, did a little bit of everything Entrepreneur over there. Entrepreneur right yeah. there. Yeah, you learn a lot from, from older people like that. You know, he's like 75. He told me to always carry uh, a handkerchief in my pocket. He, that's, you know, once, I still do it once in a while, but it really is, it really is good. One? This to, now today I do not to, I, you know what today you I do not have one but <laughs> it, it is really you know I realized how how great advice that was because every once in a while you want to wipe something off or you want to give yep. somebody a hanky oh, a clean yes. hanky it's very classy and they know? will remember that class they will always <laughs> remember that classy that classy move especially <laughs> ladies they, they love you to pull a, a clean hanky out your pocket and, you know I don't think that <laughs> ever gets old but let's talk about I mean people loved you as Leon oh yeah on curb your enthusiasm but <laughs> the way in which that transpired I mean oh, actually man. gave me goosebumps so oh. paint that picture oh man you know um, I worked at SNL for uh, three seasons and it was one of those things it's all I, I always see life as, as chess moves, and, and uh, I worked there for three seasons, and my fourth season I didn't get renewed, and I, I, I left SNL. Uh, I actually left S SNL knowing I, would be, I wouldn't be coming back, so I fired my agent, I fired a manager, and, and my agent at the time handled a few people there, so I knew I wasn't going back mm. by, because I fired him. But uh, <laughs> I ended up on the road doing stand-up, and my good friend of mine, O.G. Pierce, uh, he had... Um, he had passed away, and I was on the road. I believe I was in Atlanta in the hotel room, and one of his friends called me and told me that he had passed away, and they were having a memorial service for him in L.A. So I, uh, I went to L.A. for one day, one day, and, um, and Kirby Enthusiasm was already my favorite show in the world. You know, I love the show. And your wife actually, out loud, a yes, month before yes, this, said, you need world. to be on the show. Yep, yep. I was, I, was sitting there, I was sitting in the living room watching the show, and my wife said, uh, I said, I love this show so much, I would love to be on the show mm -hmm. one day. And my wife said, you know what? You're going to be on that show one day. You know, I can see you and Larry together. I think you, you, you say crazy stuff all the time, and I think you two guys would be great together. And, uh, you know, and, um, I've, and then all this thing, all, everything happened within a month from, from not being renewed on one show to, to uh, my wife saying that to me going to L.A. for one day because my buddy passed away. And I get to L.A., you know, I... Already fired my agent. I fired my manager. I signed with a new agent, 
and I went to meet my new agent for one day. I went in the office to meet these guys. One agent came in late and said, hey, uh, how long are you in town? I said, I'm in town. I leave tomorrow morning. He said, I got an audition here. You want to go in? I said, what's it for? And he said, curvy enthusiasm. And right then and there, I said, wow. It's crazy how life works in the universe. Absolutely. It seems to put you in the right position. And I said, well, I can go right now. I'll leave first thing in the morning. I got a 6.30 flight tomorrow morning, but I can go right now. He sent me over there. I get to the audition. It's a lot of my friends and colleagues and other actors sitting in the lobby waiting to go in also. And um, I read the sides, you know, and, um, you know, and, and I didn't know, you know, I knew I had the sides, but I thought we were going to just go on tape and they would review the tape. I had no idea I would be improvising with Larry David directly. So I, I have this thing I do. I always go into the room as a character. Mm -hmm. I, I, I never go into an audition as myself and then turn it on. I like to go in as a character. They can see how my character enters the room. You can see how my character has mannerisms and all the things. I came in as the character Leon. And uh, Larry's in the middle of the room. And I said, wow. And they said, you're going to improvise with Larry. And I knew the three scenes. And I went up to Larry. The first thing I said to Larry was, I, want, I like to control things. I like to drive the car. So the first thing I said to Larry was, OK, Larry, let's, impro let's, let's improvise. I said, I don't know what's going to happen here. I might slap you in the face. I don't know. And Larry looked at me like, he looked at me, looked at the producers, and said, hey, What's wrong? This, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy? You know. So I ended up. Uh, uh, we ended up doing the audition. I left the audition. I'm driving back to my hotel, and my agent calls me. He said, "He said, uh, how do you think you did?" I said, "I think I did great." I said, "If anybody else gets the job, hey, bless them." Mm -hmm. I leave there. I go. I go straight to a show I had in Pittsburgh, uh, outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, it was. It, it might have been the worst comedy club. It was the worst hotel. I mean, I mean, I had to sleep in my coat. The hotel was so horrible, oh. and the club was terrible. And I remember uh, me and the club owner got into a little argument about content. Um, and then I ended up, he ended up saying, you know what? I'll pay you for tonight. You know, I'll get somebody from Pittsburgh to drive up the hour and a half to do the, the, week, the, the, the remaining weekend. And then I'm driving back. I said, I can't stay overnight. So I said, I'll go to uh, the hotel near the airport. So I started driving, and next thing you know, I saw a flurry of snow, another flurry of snow, another mm. flurry of snow. Oh, my gosh. And next thing you know, it was a blizzard. And I'm doing five miles an hour on the highway. The snow got so deep so fast because I'm from the East Coast, so I know how it goes. So I slowed down a little bit. I'm doing 10 miles an hour on the highway, and my phone rings, and my agent is on the phone. I thought he was calling me about the show I just did and how you know, everything got canceled. And I said, man, I'm sorry, man. The first thing I said, I said, I'm sorry, man. It's been, it was a crazy night. You know, I didn't like the club owner. He said, don't worry about that, man. You got Kirby enthusiasm. And I said, what? I said, I'm on the highway in the blizzard right now doing 10 miles an hour on the highway. He said, do five miles per hour, man. <laughs> Slow get back down to the hotel, and take it in. Get your butt back to the hotel. I need you to fly right back to L.A., man, because you got Kirby enthusiasm, man. And you started on Monday, yeah, J.B. I started that Monday. And, you know, the first day we taped, I said this one thing. I said, that's how I do it. And, and, um, and I said, this is how we do it. This is how Absolutely. we do it. Absolutely. And that was the name of the song uh, my buddy OG Pierce wrote. Montel Jordan. With Montel Jordan. Oh. This is how we do it. And the whole season I kept using, that's how I do it. That's how I do it. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Love it. Oh, and, JB, uh, I don't want to wrap you, but I'm going to because we're making you stick around. <laughs> you can watch JB Smoove tonight at the Kentucky <laughs> Center's Bombhard Theater. The show starts at 8 o'clock, and then you can get tickets online at KentuckyCenter.org or by calling 502-584-7777. Oh. JB Smoove, let me introduce oh. you to our wonderful meteorologist, oh. Caitlin Fish, who could use some help, I think. Can you hold Can you hold this rain off tonight? I wish. I heard it's supposed to rain tomorrow. It's going to rain tomorrow. It's going to start maybe around 10 o'clock tonight or oh, so. Oh, you know what? I'm surprised. Know. Cause normally There's nothing funny about the rain. I'm so sorry. Some, they call me sunshine. <laughs> okay. I'm really surprised that that sun is still coming. Well, it's a good thing you're in town. We need more sunshine here. I just don't think we're going to see too much of it tomorrow. Ooh, okay. I know. Okay. We got to talk about the rain we heading do. into this weekend.